Hello, hello. My name is Tanya Tyler and I'm with Confidence Strides and I'm proud to announce that we have Mr. Tyrone Dubois, Dubois that's going to be on with us. Mr. Tyrone is an extraordinary knowledge, has a R&B music history and has made him the perfect contributor and commentator for the popular TV One series, Unsung. The show has featured a, a plethora of artists, including James Brown, Martha Wash, Wash High Five, Howard Hewitt, and Kashif. Tyrone continues to dispense his R&B tidbits of knowledge on TVs, on his talk show, on the talk show host, Uncle Sherwood's radio show, serving as a contributor for the segment, A 60-Second Moment in Music History. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Tyrone Duval. Well, greetings and salutations, TT. You know, that's my affectionate name for you. They don't know that, but they need to know that's what I call you. So uh, it's really good. More importantly, it's great to be here for you. And before I begin, I do have to tell your viewers and your people there, I cannot thank you personally enough for what you've done to get me to where I am today. That means a lot. None of this would have happened without meeting you and what you've done to help me along with Ernest Thomas, Patrick Fawcett, some of the other people that are, you know, in uh, television and radio, you've done a lot to help them there. And so I never want that to go unnoticed. And I want to make sure that your people know that as well. And we all thank you. Ernest said he wants to come on too, by the way. I'll, I'll be glad to have Mr. Ernest come on there. Well, today, Mr. Tyrone, I have a couple of questions I thought might be of interest to people who are looking to start their own business and trying to get out of the little funk and want to get their own creative juices flowing. So I really want to start, it's like, when you, you're, for those who don't know, you're from Cincinnati. So that means you had to take a, a giant leap from a faith to go from Cincinnati to LA to do your thing. So can you let, like, tell us a little bit about how that journey came about? Yeah, you know, I have an uncle who stayed here in Los Angeles and I was like about 19 years old or so. And I just, I felt this need of knowing that I really needed to make a change in my life at 19. I didn't know where it was. And I was in a, I, in a flux as a teenager, you somehow or another believe that you are, you know, supposed to be somewhere or go somewhere. And I just, I was married at the time at that point, but it was already ending. And I just said, I needed to see something different. So in February, I just decided I'm going to come to Los Angeles. And I, um, I feel like that's what got me to where, got me here. And I wasn't sure where the journey was going to take me, but I knew that the journey was important because if I was going to move, I was going to need to be uncomfortable. Right. Oh, that's great. So, I mean, did you have a lot of like um, external resistance or was it more internal that you had to deal with? I think it was a little of each. You know, the one thing that I've learned is that for all of us, our, our, our greatest strides or our confidence strides is what you call yourself with, with the things which you do. Are you being able to be uncomfortable with making a move? I think that's one of the biggest problems that a lot of us have. We say we want to do something, but we're concerned about what other people say or what other people think or whether it will work out or whether it, what happens if it doesn't. And the truth of the matter is, it usually always works out. You're just gonna have to be uncomfortable in doing it. So uh, when you hit those ro those roadblocks of like resistance, do you have like some kind of um, regimen in place that helps you get past your funk or how do you how do you manage that? One of the things that I've learned, Tanya, is that I cannot afford to have a plan B. Plan A will always work. And one of the reasons why is because it's the one thing that all of us just simply want to do. We want plan A to work. And plan A has to work because you don't want a plan B. If there's a plan B, guess what? Most of us usually go to a plan B. So in my mind, the one thing I learned is to take an assessment of where I am at the moment. And the second thing I usually do, even when I'm bent out of shape or when I feel myself in fear, I try to take the emotion out of the equation. In other words, just kind of think, think it through without having to concern myself with what's going to happen with this sense of anxiety if it doesn't happen the way in which I want it to. So I've just learned with all the resistance in which I've had, there just isn't a plan B for me. And that's, I think that's what's really kind of helped me to push forward, even when I'm uncomfortable and Many people ask, am I uncomfortable on television or radio? And the truth is, I'm always uncomfortable. But what I'm more uncomfortable about is if I don't do it. That's what makes the difference. So that's, that's interesting. It's like, do you ever get used to being on, uh, seen on television? Or, you know, like, how do you deal with that? 
You know, as a public figure, you know, the one thing that I've had to learn, and I, I, I want to preface this by saying, you know, I rarely give like video interviews or interviews at all on television about my personal self. So, and the reason why is because I'm, I'm usually uncomfortable talking about myself um, because in my mind, I just believe that I'm just going to do it no matter what happens. I don't allow myself the opportunity to say no or that what's going to happen, oh my God, is this going to work? And I just really believe it's just going to have to work no matter what because in my mind and for everyone who does something, it's all we've got. So if it's all we've got, then you're going to make it work. And I think that's what's always got me, you know, to where I am today. My struggle, I think, has been my strength. And I think that's how I look at it. Right. So I know you've been in in um in the in the uh radio circuit for a lot. How was it transitioning into the television circuit? Like how was that a whole new element that you had to get used to or how did yeah, that but yeah, I'll never forget. I remember the first unsung I did, and it was for Midnight Star. And it was the very first one. And I remember when I watched it on television, I thought about the fact that I was looking as though I was being interviewed, when in essence, they didn't need someone interviewed. They needed somebody to contribute to the show. And I remember after I watched it, I remember calling the producer back and I said, hey, thanks so much for giving me an opportunity to be here. But let me assure you, the next time you call me, I'm going to be ready. And one of the things I did was I studied what everyone else was doing. And then I realized what I really just needed to do was just be me. And, you know, on television, it shows because I'm just being me when I'm talking and people respect and appreciate that. And people who know you know that it's not an act. So I've just learned not to be an act on television, you know, unless I'm doing a film or a movie, that's different. But otherwise, when you're doing something that's informative, be informative, know your element. And I think that's what's gotten me to where I am today. Right. Well, anyone who knows you, you knows you, you're authentic on the camera and off the camera because you have a personality that's just amazing. What <laughs> so says how did happiness that... better than me? No, I'm going to say, how did, how did that come about? I mean, you know, you... you some people might feel that, you know, a positive attitude is developed or, you know, they have it. So, I mean, I'm not diving into much of your personal history, but I mean, how do you manage to deal with the, 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 the setbacks, I guess? Um, you know, I, um, in, in my life, I think I've always tried to find what was positive because things weren't always fantastic. You know, they weren't always great. And like many people, we struggle with the little things in life, you know, and I've had to learn that, you know, on my own. But simplicity has always been a big part of my life. The simple things mean a lot to me, even just, you know, in the mornings now, you know, I'll just go for a walk for a long time or, you know, I, I, I keep things simple. I recognize that being a public figure doesn't mean that I always have to be the public figure all the time, that there's a time and a place for me to simply you know, be private. And, you know, I'm like everybody else who has dreams or goals, it's, it's, it's not easy. And I mean, I'm speaking to you, not only just as you interview me as a friend, because, you know, you've seen the struggles in which I've been through before I got here. And, you know, it's for all the times in which people have asked me to interview, it's very few and far between. So I really felt like it was very important for me to do this, particularly with you, because um, there's nothing that we haven't spoken about. We've We've talked about everything and you've allowed that. And so when you find someone who's able to just respect and appreciate who you are for what you've become, it just makes it a lot easier. So for me, I, you know, my life hasn't always been easy. It's always been for the most part a struggle. And part of it is what we place upon ourselves and recognize that we try to backtrack to try to make things right only to discover that sometimes we can't. Right. So. Oh. I, I love, like I said, anybody, we've had a friendship for a period of time. So it's like, I remember sometimes when I was in a, like a little funk mode, I'm like, let me call Tyrone because I need a boost of uh, positivity. So how important is it to, to surround yourself with other um, people, like to a team or, or do you have a team? Do you put together a team? How do you manage that? Look, it's really essential. If you're, you need to understand, you can't make the round hole fit in a square peg. So if you're, dealing with people who are square pegs, you're not going to be able to fit into their circle. And what I've really learned, I think the biggest thing in which I've learned is that if you're not ready for people to talk about you, you're not ready for success. 
I think once you've learned to be okay with that and not concern yourself with over 300 million people in the United States, and for all of us, we've allowed two or three people to dictate how we live. And that's the one thing that I'll never do again. I think once I got by that, I started living. You know, I remember that a long time ago, I was at someone's house and I said, oh, this living room, I love your living room. She, I said, it looks really, you know, enjoyable. And she said, my living room is made to be lived in. And that, that I got it. You know, I really caught that because a lot of times we go somewhere in the living room, you know how we grew up, you know, that was like a sacred place. You know, we didn't, we didn't do that. But what I do is, is along the way, when I meet people, I catch nuggets of things that really change the course of my life. And um, as we're talking, it reminds me of something that I, when I worked at another company and when I worked there, he asked me to move a set of equipment from one room to another. And I remember saying to him, I don't think this will fit in that room. He said to me, I know it's not going to fit in the room. That's why I'm asking you to figure out how to do it. And But I use that as a tool for everything else in which I've done in my life. No, it wasn't going to fit in that room. But eventually, I figured out a way to get it in there. So that means that, in essence, it's almost the same way of life. You know, you just going to have to figure out a way to make it work. Because the truth of the matter is, you always do. Now, it may not always fit the way you always wanted to. Some of us go around the corner to get across the street, and we have to kind of figure that out. And that's what I've learned. I like that. I like that. So how did Timeless Tracks come about? How did that whole uh, uh, scene come about with your, your Timeless Tracks? Timeless you know, Tracks began with me. I would drive 144 miles every other weekend to Barstow, California at a McDonald's where it had this train station and there was a radio station there. I got there to this place and I remember working really hard and telling this guy I really wanted to work there and he had saw my resume and he said, but you have no radio experience. And I remember going home with the person which I was seeing explaining about the interview that I had with him and she said, look, uh, you're not gonna get that job. And I remember how it made me feel like, I went, I went to my car and I started crying. I called this radio station up. I said, look, just thanks for the interview. And they said, we'll give you the worst hours and the worst time. And so I would drive that 144 miles after getting off a, a full days of work and be on the air from midnight to six for six years. And in between the time that the music was going on, I wanted to do a show some, similar to what Casey Kasem did. And it was called Timeless Tracks based on the top R&B songs of America, you know, over the last six decades, according to the national you know r&b singles charts and i got a chance to meet casey Kasem, and i told him that you know what i was doing and uh, i asked him if i could send him a copy of it and he said no and he gave me some answer why i couldn't and i said that's okay mr Kasem. i'm gonna be like you i said you're the reason i got into uh to radio he said i'll see you at the top son so this guy came and gave me a card and told me to send it to him he'll listen and i sent him the uh the show and K mr Kasem called me and he said Tyrone, you know, this is Casey Kasem. Didn't I tell you not to send me that show? And I said, Mr. Kasem, look, I'm really sorry. You were my idol. I used to listen to you as a kid, and uh, I'm, I didn't mean any harm. I'm, I'm sorry I won't bother you. And the next words out of his mouth was, now I got to show you how to do it right. He said, come to my house. And that's how Timeless Tracks began. Wow, that's an amazing story. So how did you transition into Unsung? How did that come about? Well, you know, the one thing I always tell people is that you have to be ready for any opportunity that comes to you. And one of the producers of Unsung was a dear friend of mine, his name was Michael Ajakwe, who passed away about a year or so ago. And I remember uh, he was there and I, I met him in a uh, interview that I was doing and he was a producer for Unsung. And uh, I had shortly after my cancer surgery, he wanted me to host his show that he had done for Ray Parker Jr. But after my cancer, my face looked very gaunt. You know, it didn't look like I was, I looked really sickly. And so I remember that, you know, months later, uh, someone who was supposed to do it couldn't show up. And then I hosted it for him. I sat next to this guy who was asking me questions. And um, he was asking me about who was the first. And I was just having a conversation with this guy. And um, I gave him a card. And two weeks later, I found out he was the executive producer of Unsung. Didn't wow. know who I was talking to. And he asked me to come on. And that's how it began for me. And my life changed forever, really. It changed forever. Wow. That's, like I said, your story is an amazing how, how you, you took the, the faith, of, the leap of faith to go out there and doing what you're doing. So 
let me hear about this book that you have. I heard I heard you're an author now. So what's going on now? Yes, I have a book. <laughs> I do indeed. One of the books of which I did to get my story out was called Get Out of Your Own Way. And the book is based upon uh, stories of people who had faced a sense of adversities and found themselves into the midst of the things in which they wanted to do. They made their dreams come true, and then they talked about how they did it. And as a matter of fact, your name is in my book because I made sure I put that in there. You are a big component of me getting to where I am today. And it was a very important aspect of, you know, it gave me a sense of freedom because it allowed me to, you know, finally kind of release some of the things in which I was feeling. You know, and the truth of the matter is, even for myself, there were days I just felt like I was a loser. Like I really just wasn't making it happen. And, you know, this book showed, and it gave me a sense of release and showed the sense of perseverance about the things in which I needed to do in order to make my dreams come true. And for all of us, I'm not the only one, all of us to some degree feel the same way. The answer to some degree is always going to need to be yes for the things that you do because you'll, you'll make it work. And I learned that from working for a very important celebrity who I worked for for years. And she used to always say, you know, I don't care who calls. The answer is yes, I'll figure it out. And that's been the same life in which I've lived, you know, for myself. Right. So I, I had a question. I was, so, I was listening to your story. But I was like, I have a question. Hold on, give me a minute. <laughs> Stay focused, stay focused, but you know, I'm trying to stay focused, and sometimes I, 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 you know, I didn't write it down, because like I said, my whole thing is to stay present, it's like, how do you stay present when somebody's talking, and that's like one of the key things is giving yourself, you know, listening to it and being present is a gift, so it's like, I, I know that there's so much stuff that I'd love to like know about how you do things and stuff like that, so it skipped and slipped my mind. That's really what I'm saying. One of the that, but the one thing I will tell you how I do stay present, what's always helped me is recognizing that each person is important and I might be able to get something that's going to help me. And I've learned that um, with whatever it is in which we do, that there you can't be better. You have to be different. Nobody ever hires you or says yes to you because you're better. Someone always says yes to you because you're different. There's something different about you because they meet 500 other people who are the same. So if they meet 500 different people, what makes you different from the other 499? And if you tell people what usually makes you different, usually you'll get what you want because people don't right. want what's better. They want what's, what's different. You know, uh, that comes with better becomes with expectations. Different comes with you being able to be yourself. I love that. I love that. So we're down to like, three minutes and I would love to say how do we find out where you are where where can we find your um your work and stuff well um you can always go to my website which is rnbhistorian.com um I can be also you know reached on my Facebook and social medias on uh, Facebook LinkedIn um and Instagram as well currently I'm working on the book called the four seasons of R&B from the 60s to the 90s four different decades and you know the music that you know, was a big part of, you know, our lives then and the importance of what it was and the top 10 acts of each particular decade. And I uh, also talk about the charts and uh, the things of that nature. For example, in the 60s, we used records. In the 70s, we used eight tracks. In the 80s, we used cassettes. In the 90s, we used CDs. And, you know, there were different things that we used. And so I'm talking about the artists then. It made a big difference in my life. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. Right. So with the, I know you have the book that you're doing and stuff like that. So if anybody was interested in, in um, you do speeches, do you go around, do you tour, do you, okay. Yeah, they can uh, reach me at uh, on my website, rnbhistorian.com or tyronedubois.com. We'll get them to the same place. Um, it will get them uh, to, my, to my website, which has all the information on it. But the most important thing that I always tell people is, you know, your struggle is always your strength. Many people look at struggle as somehow or another, it's, um, there's something wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being able to struggle. The biggest thing for each and every one of us is being able to struggle and know the way out. No one's ever, ever wants to hear the story of a person who has everything. People want to hear the story of a person who's had struggles and made it through. Those are the ones that people really and truly want to look at. And in this day and age, and particularly in the times in which we're in right now, it's a very important thing to do. So make yourself visible and being able to do everything that you've always wanted to do. This is the time to do it. 
And even now, while we're self-quarantined here in Los Angeles, the one thing which I've learned for me right now is I've got a book that I've got to finish, that Four Seasons of R&B. So when I get out in the summer, I'm going to be ready to go. And I think that's very important. Right, right. So how is everything out there in California? You staying safe? Yeah, I am indeed. You know, it's kind of weird, though. I mean, it's a it's a, a sense of a hush that, you know, everybody kind of knows. I think it's just a new normal that we're all getting to. But the truth of the matter is, you know, like they say, hashtag tag alone together. And the key is, is us being able to just, you know, to get through this, stay safe and recognize that this is not a joke. I've already lost a couple of friends from the virus already. So for me, I realize that it's definitely something that's very real. And so I want for everyone to please you know, stay alert, stay aware, stay informed, but more importantly, please, by all means, just stay safe. All right. Well, Mr. Tyrone, thank you for your, your time. We are up on the uh, on my, my time here, and I want to close out. I will definitely make sure I have all the links to find you in, in the, the descriptions and stuff like that. And like I said, thank you for your time to come on here. And with that, I want to say have a great day, um, and I will... Uh, Thank you for your time. You're very welcome. Wait, I got my eye on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh.